It's week 15 of the NFL. We give you our three best bets for this Sunday and our bet of the year. And it all starts right now. Hey guys, it's Matt from GrandstandBetters.com and we give you our best three bets for week 15 and we have our bet of the 2022 NFL season. We'll get to that in just a moment, but first, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. You don't want to miss any of our free picks and predictions all throughout the year. And while you're at it, smash that like button if you are ready for another fun-filled Sunday in the NFL. And are you ready for our bet of the year? We're going to get to that again in just a moment. But without further ado, let's dive into our first play here of Week 15 in the NFL and start with the Detroit Lions versus the New York Jets in the 1 p.m. Eastern time slot. Jets favored by one point here. The over-under is 43 and a half. Lions, they have won five of six, and honestly, their schedule is set up for them to make the playoffs if they can take care of business on the field. They have the Jets, Panthers, Bears, and Packers to finish out the season. They only sit one and a half games back of the New York Giants and the Washington Commanders, who actually play each other this week. Now, I'm not sure we are still used to saying this, but the Lions' offense is what has propelled them into this position. They have a top-five scoring offense. They're putting up 27 points per game in their top five in yards per game. And Jared Goff hasn't looked half bad, especially in the back end of the season. In the last five weeks, he has seven touchdowns and no interceptions. Now, in the previous nine weeks, he had a 2-to-1 TD to INT ratio. So, yeah, if Goff can continue protecting the football and putting up points with this offense, they should be easily able to win three of the last four games and maybe sneak into the playoffs. The rushing attack has also helped this offense as well, but they're really utilizing them inside the red zone. Williams and Swift do not have huge rushing numbers on the season. Both have only combined for 1,100 yards, but they have 18 touchdowns combined. This week, this offense is going to be going up against the fourth best secondary in the NFL, so we would expect the Lions to lean a little more heavily on that rushing attack, especially since the team is averaging 4.5 yards per carry. So what about these New York football Jets? Well, they find themselves in a similar position in the playoff picture on the AFC side of things as they are on the outside now looking in after losing three of the last four games. Mike White, who has started the last three games for the Jets, took a huge blow to the ribs in that loss to the Bills, and it was just announced yesterday that he will not start. It will be Zach Wilson under center. Over the last three weeks, with White at the helm, they are 1-2. and two. You might assume that was because of their backup quarterback, and they were unable to probably move the football. However, if you assume that, you're wrong. Over the last three games, the Jets are third in the NFL with over 420 yards per game, and Mike White has had the second most passing yards in the league over those three weeks. So then common sense would tell you that their defense is what's letting them down. Well, again, you would be wrong. Over the last three weeks, they have given up the second least amount of yards at only 270 per game. So what the hell is going on with this team? Turnovers. That's what's going on. They have turned the ball over five times in the last three weeks, and they're giving their opponents great starting field position, and those teams have taken advantage of those opportunities. Now, unfortunately for the Jets, they face a Lions team who is top 10 in turnover differential this season, and now that Zach Wilson will be starting this week, that is a man who has thrown more interceptions than touchdowns. So what is our best bet here in the Jets versus Lions matchup in Week 15? Well, to be honest, this is essentially a must-win game for both of these teams as a loss would put them both at least two games out of the playoffs with only three, three weeks left to play. The Lions, they have a hotter team right now, and the Jets, they're still the Jets. Honestly, though, however, defense usually tends to win these games. The Lions are giving up 27 points per game this season, which is second worst in the NFL, while the Jets, they're only giving up 18.7 per game. With Zach Wilson back in the scheme of things, personally, we think he's got a vendetta, and he's going to play up to his potential this week. I think everybody's a little bit too high on the Lions, as most of their wins on the season have come against teams at the bottom of the barrel. So, with our first bet... 
for week 15 in the NFL. We are going to take the New York Jets minus one over the Detroit Lions. Now with our second matchup of week 15, we're going to take a look at the Atlanta Falcons versus the New Orleans Saints. Also in the 1 p.m. Eastern time slot, Saints four-point favorites at the moment, over-under set at 43.5. Now the Falcons come into this one at 5-8 and eight on the season, and most would think, looking at that record, that there is no chance they make the playoffs, and most would be right most of the time. But the NFC South said, hold my beer because we have a division that doesn't want to win football games. The Falcons only sit one game back of the Bucks, who have to play the Bengals this week. There's a real possibility that the Bucks, Panthers, and Falcons could all be 6-8 and eight, tied atop of this division at the end of this week. The Falcons themselves, they're coming off two losses, and it looks like Kyle Pitts going down several weeks ago has hurt that passing game, despite not really even using him that much on the season. They have only thrown the football for 152 yards per game, and in recent weeks, they are not looking good. On the season, the leading receiver is Drake London, who has just over 500 yards. But the good news, if you're a Falcons fan, is this team can rush the football. They have a three-headed monster with Patterson, Algier, and Mariota. But they also have involved Huntley most in recent weeks as the team is now averaging five yards per carry. That is something that the New Orleans Saints rush defense has struggled to defend on the road. They're giving up 136 yards per game. If the Falcons can get this rushing game going early, it would allow Mariota to get some play action passing situations uh, deeper in the game and hit London maybe for a huge vertical pass down the field. And maybe the Falcons can put up some points here. Now on the other side of the football field, you have the four and nine Saints and surely they have to be eliminated from playoff contention, but no, you would be wrong. They actually, with a win this week and a Bucks loss and a Panthers loss, would only sit one game back of the division lead. What nonsense this is. Anyways, they themselves are also coming off two losses, and one was that heartbreaker Monday night football loss against the Bucks. This team, in my opinion, is one of the teams in the NFL that really has no true identity. They have started Andy Dalton for the majority of the season at quarterback, where uh, he's been below average, just throwing for 2,200 yards, a 2-to-1 two TD to INT ratio. And other than Chris Olave, no other wide receiver is catching the football. So you would think that with... Kamara, Hill, and Ingram, this rushing attack would be top five or at least top ten in the re league, right? No, they're not. They're 21st in rushing and only average just over 100 yards on the ground per game. Kamara only has 550 yards rushing, and as a team, they're averaging just about four yards per carry. Kamara's actually averaging 3.8 yards per carry. But this week, they are in luck because they're going to go up against the third worst defense in the NFL. So what is our best bet for this NFC South matchup? Well, a couple things here. First, who would have thought five years ago, or for that matter, at the beginning of the season, that Andy Dalton would have an outside chance at leading the Saints to the playoff? That is absolutely nuts. Also, if we're talking must-win games, the Saints for sure cannot lose this game, but either side would really allow the Bucks and Panthers to fight out for the division with a loss in this one. Now, both teams, they are coming off a bye week, and they should be fresh on both sides of the football. The last time these two teams faced off against each other, the Falcons rushed for over 200 yards, and we expect that to be the game plan again this week. You would think that Kamara and the Saints would also to look to run the football. And we're going to bet a little contrarian here and think that actually Andy Dalton is going to air this one out too. And look for Taysom Hill to actually get mixed in there passing the football as well. So look for this to be a much more up-tempo game than you would think as the first meeting between these two teams was. And with our second best bet of NFL Week 15, we're going to take the Falcons and the Saints over 43 and a half points. Now, before we get into our best bet of the year, just a reminder to head on over to GrandstandBetters.com, become part of our family, and start living that grandstand life. But as we mentioned, we do have our best bet of the year here in Week 15. It's our 2022 NFL best bet. This is a game that is on our member card. It's the Tennessee Titans LA Chargers game at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. Now, 
Like every year, we hold ourselves accountable for calling this our best bet of the year. And in the comments, make sure you give us a punishment if we don't get this one right. We will pick a punishment within reason and do it live on an upcoming stream in week 16. But that is a big if because last year's bet of the year was an easy winner and we feel confident in this one too. Chargers in this matchup, they're a three-point favorite coming into it. Over-under is 46 and a half. Tennessee Titans, they come into this one sitting in first place in the AFC South, but honestly, they seem like they want to do everything in their power to lose the division. Good news for them is no one else in the division wants to win it either. Uh, so as long as they essentially win the last game of the season against the Jags, they should be division winners no matter what happens the next three weeks. Although that might not be so easy to do as they have now lost three in a row, including one to the Jags last week. Now Tannehill has had a down year, only throwing for about 2,300 yards and 13 touchdowns. And if Derrick Henry wasn't on this team, they might historically have one of the worst offenses ever in the NFL. Henry has 76% of all rushing yards for the team with 11 touchdowns, which is nearly half of all the Titans' touchdowns on the season. The offense at the moment is fourth worst in the NFL, averaging less than 300 yards per game. Their leading receiver is Robert Woods, who only has 400 yards on the season. And it really seems like their only plan of attack is giving Derrick Henry the ball and letting him do his own thing. And honestly, they shouldn't change it this week. The Chargers, they have the fifth worst rush defense in the NFL. So let's talk about the Chargers for a second, who finally showed us that they can win a game uh, that matters, beating the Miami Dolphins on Sunday Night Football last week. Herbert was pretty decent, 39 of 51 for 367 and a touchdown in that one. And Mike Williams and Keenan Allen, who seem to always be battling injuries, had a phenomenal game. Those two combined for 18 receptions and over 200 yards receiving. The Chargers, they are a pass-first team, and it's not even close. They throw the football second most in the NFL at 43 attempts per game, just behind Tom Brady and the Bucks. And, of course, that in correlation has them as the third best offense in the league. Now, that is going to continue this week as they're going to face the second worst secondary in the NFL. One who just gave up 368 yards passing to Trevor Lawrence last week. So the question is, what is our 2022 NFL season bet of the year? Well, the Tennessee Titans have looked awful offensively for the most part this season in terms of moving the football down the field. In fact, they're only putting up 18 points per game and 17 points per game on the road. But if there was one team that they could break that trend against, we do think it's this Chargers team. And for the last five weeks, the Chargers have given up 22 points per game or more. And in two of the last three home games, they gave up 30 points or more. And with the Chargers putting up 43 pass attempts per game against the second worst secondary this week, this one might be in for kind of a back and forth up tempo game. So with our 2022 NFL bet of the year, we are going to take the Tennessee Titans and the LA Chargers over 46 and a half points again. In the comments, let us know what our punishment should be for not telling you a correct bet if this one doesn't come to fruition. If it doesn't hit, we'll pick one of those punishments and do it live again in week 16. And that does it for us really here at Grandstand Betters. As always, sit back, relax, enjoy another fun-filled Sunday of football. And we'll see you live right here for Monday Night Football between the Rams and the Packers.